We're ready to mill. If you've been keeping up with the previous episodes, you'll know that we took the Bantam Tools milling machine out of the box and set it up. We also laid out a very simple, single-sided PCB using KeyCAD, so let's make it. To start, get a blank piece of single-sided FR1, flip it over and attach double-sided tape to the back. I recommend covering the entire side with tape. This is what holds the FR1 to the spoil board. If you mill out a chunk that's not attached to the bed, it could go flying and ruin your piece or damage something inside the machine. Remember, tape is much cheaper than FR1 or the parts in your machine. With your machine plugged into your computer, open the Bantam Tools software and home the head if necessary. If you look at the bracket, you'll see a crosshair located at the bottom left corner. If it's on the right, click Placement under Material and click the toggle switch to Left. This is the origin point. We'll need to attach our board at the bottom left. Click the loading button to make the next part easier. This will bring the bed forward. Open your machine and stick the blank PCB to the spoil board. Align the bottom left corner of your PCB with the bottom left inside corner of the bracket. Push down to ensure that the PCB is stuck to the spoil board. Back in the software, make sure you have single-sided FR1 selected for the material. Click Open Files under Plans and open your front copper Gerber file. In the pop-up dialog box, change the outline to the Edge Cuts Gerber and change the holes to your PTH file. Click OK and you should see your board placed on the copper. Click on the arrow next to Placement to expand out the board coordinates. Here, you can change the location of the board. Say, for example, we change Y to 60 millimeters. This would allow us to mill our board in a blank spot on this already used piece of FR1. For now, let's just keep the coordinates at their defaults. Take a look at the buttons under Parts to Mill. You can see that Traces, Holes, and Outline are all selected. This tells the machine that we want to mill everything in one go. You can technically mill, drill, and route the outline of your board all in one go, but I don't recommend doing it that way. You're going to have to babysit the machine in case something goes wrong, so you might as well do it in individual steps. First, select the bits you want to mill your traces with, mill your traces, then select the bits you want to drill the holes with, do that, and then finally select the bit you want to route the outline in, and then route it before prying it off the spoil board. Remember, we're making a prototype here, not trying to optimize number of tool changes for a production run. Back in the software, deselect holes and outline. In the previous episode, we found that the 5mm engraving bit and the 1 64th inch end mill worked the best for this board, so select those. The last part we need to worry about is the board thickness, as that will determine how deep the mill will cut into the material. If you expand Size under the Material section, you should see that the software has a default thickness for FR1. This works as a good starting point, but you might have to adjust it once you start milling. If you have the PCB probing kit, you can tell the machine to measure the actual thickness of the board. If not, feel free to skip this next step. If you do have the probing kit, Slide the metal clip so that it's touching the board, and insert a 5mm engraving bit. We're going to need that as our first bit anyway. Don't forget the cardboard to protect your bit tip, and remove it when you're done. Put the window back on. In the software, click the Change button next to Tool, and select the 5mm engraving bit. Click Continue, and the machine will move the tool head over to the side of the board. You might need to nudge the bit to the right some so that it will miss your FR1 and touch the lip of the spoil board. Click Locate Tool. The machine will carefully touch the bit to the edge of the spoil board. Make sure it does not touch the FR1. Click Bit Breaker Probe Material Thickness. Double check to make sure you have the probing kit clip touching the copper board and click Next. Check to make sure you have bare copper underneath your bit and click Probe Material. The machine will slowly lower the bit to the copper and stop once it touches it. The software should give you a pop-up telling you the measured thickness. Click Accept. Underneath Material, you should see that the size has been changed to Custom and that the thickness has changed. Once you are done, remove the clip from the FR1. Otherwise, you risk crashing the bit into it and damaging stuff. If you don't have the probing kit, you can also measure the thickness with some calipers and enter the value manually. Just remember to measure it with the tape on the board as that's what will be in the machine. 
Once again, this step is optional. You can just go with the standard default thickness in the software. Either way, you're probably going to have to make a few adjustments to get the milling depth just right. If you haven't done so already, insert the 5mm engraving bit. Click Start Milling. Click OK to start the process. The mill will automatically start to move. For this board, you should only need the 5mm bit for a few spots to mill away the copper between the TSSOP pads. Once milling is done, open the window and vacuum out the debris. You'll want to inspect the cuts to make sure they are about the right depth. If you cut too deep with the engraving bit, the pads for the TSSOP will be too narrow to solder to. If you cut too shallow, you'll see that the bit didn't make it all the way through the copper, or you'll see little fingers of copper in the grooves that could potentially cause a short. For me, setting the board thickness to 1.75 millimeters in the software proved to be about right. If your milling doesn't look right, try moving the board over in the software and cutting again. If your cuts are too deep, try increasing the thickness of the board by about 0.1 millimeters in the software. If your cuts are too shallow, try decreasing the thickness of the board by 0.1 millimeters. Once you are happy with the cuts, take out the engraving bit and put in a 1 64th inch end mill. The software should be telling you to swap out bits. Since we just did that, click continue. Make sure the bit will touch the lip of the spoil board and click locate tool. The machine will auto locate the tool and then immediately begin milling the area around your traces. Once it's done, clean out the mess with your vacuum cleaner and inspect the cuts again. If the milling is too deep, you'll see large pronounced walls that dig into the substrate under the copper. Normally, this isn't much of a problem unless you mill through to the other side. If it's too shallow, you'll see that not all of the copper was milled away. Using a board thickness of about 1.75 millimeters worked well for me, the same as it was for the engraving bit. Once you figure out the right thickness setting, you can usually leave it that way in the software, at least until you go to a new type of board, like a double-sided PCB. All the boards in an FR1 pack should be about the same thickness, give or take a few mils. Now comes the drilling part. Deselect traces and select holes. Change the engraving bit to none. Zoom in on the holes and notice that we can technically make these holes with the 1 64th inch end mill. While you can use a 1 64th inch end mill, you usually want to use the largest bit possible to get the job done, as it wears down the bit less and you're less likely to break a tip. Change the bit to a 1 32nd inch end mill and make sure you can still drill out the holes. Click Start Milling and click OK. You'll be asked to swap out bits. Change out the 1 64th inch end mill with a 1 32nd inch end mill. Click Continue and tell the software to locate the tool. The machine will gauge the height of the tool and automatically start drilling out the through holes. Once it's done, vacuum out the chips and examine the holes. Make sure that the holes are in the middle of the annular rings and no copper traces were pulled up. Back in the software, deselect holes and select outline. You're welcome to use the 1 8 inch end mill here if you've got one, but I like to keep the 1 32nd inch mill for routing. It's one less tool change, and I find that routing out the board outline with the 1 8 inch mill makes a rather large mess. Click Start Milling and OK. Because we didn't need to change the tool, the machine should immediately start routing out the board. Once the routing is complete, vacuum out the debris. I definitely recommend removing the bit before prying up the board. You don't want to cut yourself like I did. To make the next step easier, click the Loading button. This will move the bed toward the front of the machine. Use your fingernails or some tweezers to carefully remove your newly milled board. You can use some rubbing alcohol to help release the tape if needed. Since we're done, vacuum out the rest of your machine to keep it clean. Inspect your PCB to make sure everything looks okay. Remove any tape from the back. If you think there might be some copper in some of the thinner cuts, you can use an X-Acto knife to carefully cut in between the traces or pads to keep them isolated. Solder your surface mount part first, as that's usually the trickiest. Then, solder the headers onto the board. If they'll fit, I like to put them in a breadboard first to hold them in place while I solder. And there you have it, a perfectly usable breakout board in a couple of hours. The idea of getting your cuts to the right depth and choosing the correct bit for the job might seem a little daunting at first. 
Start with a few simple boards and you'll eventually get the hang of it. Next time we're going to kick it up a notch as we mill a double-sided board which can be a little trickier. Stay tuned and please subscribe if you want to follow along. <laughs>